So you know how everybody gets all excited when they do a big lift? I'm gonna do a concentration curl, freak out. <laughs> I need a belt to shit this. One year ago today, I woke up to some of the worst news I've had in a very long time, and that was the passing of my friend John Meadows. For those of you who don't know him, he is one of the real pioneers and innovators in this whole industry of muscle building and all things training, who I was lucky enough to work alongside with and get to know as a friend over several years. There are countless hours of footage that we filmed together from training sessions and workshops and lectures that have never really made it anywhere beyond just a filming it, including what I want to share with you today, which is an arm workout that we did together in Madison, Wisconsin, right before one of our workshops over there. Now, for cowbell extensions. <laughs> now, there's a few reasons why a lot of footage like this has never really made it anywhere beyond being just filmed, but for this session specifically, it's because we never really planned on making it actual content. So we didn't film anything like an intro or an outro or anything educational around why we we're doing the things that we were doing. We were just having a little bit of fun with our training before teaching in a workshop here in Madison, Wisconsin. And I thought to myself, look, you know what? I might as well just film the content, just get it on my camera, set my tripod up and just leave it at that. Happy place. But after going through the footage myself for the first time in a few years, I've realized that there's quite a few things in here that are really interesting and they really give a good insight into how John would set up his programming and training to not just be a lot more effective, but also a whole lot of fun. So hopefully you enjoy this and get something useful out of it. Also, please do go check out John Meadows' channel over on YouTube because though he's no longer with us, there is still a ton of really useful content being uploaded there on a regular basis, which is fantastic to see. All right, let's get into the workout. So we were joined in this workout by IFBB Pro Sarah Fector, and we started out, as you'll see here, on triceps pushdowns. You'll see three different techniques. Sarah sticks with a standard palms down grip, whilst I go through a rotating grip with a little bit of an extra stretch into uh, shoulder flexion, and John sticks with a standard palms down grip with his elbows flared out and his palms in close together. This is really just due to comfort more than anything else. We each naturally gravitated towards whatever we were most comfortable with, though you could definitely make arguments for or against any one of these techniques in different contexts. More than anything else, I'd say it's important to use all three variations at different points in time. You'll get a little bit more of a stretch by using my variation, while John's variation will give you a little bit more stability and allow you to lift the most weight on the pushdown. So we did sets of around 12 to 15 here, and we supersetted it with a move that I was playing around a lot with at the time, which is the bodyweight skull crusher. While skull crushers with the barbell often feel like absolute trash for most people, these bodyweight skull crushers feel awesome. I like doing them on an incline bench or a preacher bench like this, so you can keep a neutral grip and roll up and back on your knuckles and hands. A lot of people do them on Smith machines or on a barbell in a rack, which works fine as well, but I do find this to be a lot more comfortable. So we were doing sets to failure here, immediately after the pushdowns. <laughs> Next up, we went into one of John's favorite exercises, which is the kettlebell skull crusher. Now, this is another exercise that I'm not 100% sure on why it works so good, and neither did John really, but we just knew that it felt really good and a whole lot better for us than using, say, a straight bar or an easy curl bar or even just dumbbells. Thinking about it now, I think it may be to do with how the kettlebells are pulling you into this flexed shoulder position constantly because they're always pulling you backwards towards your, um, towards your head, which means your body has to activate the shoulder extensors a little bit more throughout the entire movement, especially in that lockout position where with a dumbbell or with a, um, a barbell, there is pretty much no resistance. So this means that your rear delts, your lats, and even your triceps will be activated a little bit more and provide a little bit more stability to through the entire shoulder and elbow joint as you're performing the skull crusher. So we pushed this for around three sets of about 12 to 15 reps as well. And we finished up with a couple of extra pulse reps out of the bottom on each set to emphasize that stretch position. And John also finished up with a double drop set and that was triceps done. Next, we moved into biceps. And we kept a pretty quick pace here with just the three of us. We went back and forth going through the barbell curls, only resting for however long it took for the other person to be doing their set. We did three or four sets here of around 10 to 20 reps, so a big rep range there. We started out with around 20 reps and the reps gradually fell down to around 10 as the sets went on. Now, what you'll see here is a bit of a recurring theme with a lot of John's training. 
Once you establish a decent pump, whether it's from just a few sets of curls or from doing the push downs before the kettlebell skull crushes and then a few sets on the skull crushes as well, John always liked this idea of getting in a good amount of blood flow and getting a strong pump to his muscles early on in a workout. And then he would go into a couple of hard sets where he'd really push the intensity. And that's why he saved the drop set for the final set of kettlebell skull crushes only. And why on the curls here, we're pushing to complete partial failure, adding in a few cheat reps as well at the very end. The key here is to make sure you're doing these kind of intensity techniques in a very intelligent way. You're not just throwing intensity at your body just for the sake of it. It was all planned out in a way that was methodical to ensure that we're getting as much stimulus as possible whilst minimizing the extra fatigue that may be accumulating in the joints or in the nervous system. So for the last exercise, we finished on a machine preacher curl for three sets of 10 to 20 reps as well. To push this one to failure, John used one of his favorite techniques, which was isotension. So what we do here is we push to a failure point and then we'd hold the stretch or the mid-range position for as long as we could stand whilst actively trying to flex up against the weight. Again, this is something that's best left for the end of the workout or after many sets where you've accumulated a ton of volume already. And typically in exercises where you're less prone to cheating or using other muscles that you don't want to be contributing. So while we technically could be doing this on say a barbell curl, we chose to do it on a supported machine preacher curl and not even a barbell preacher curl because this gives you a lot more bracing support and a lot more inherent safety with the machine helping you out a little bit there. And also from the position that you're in, where on a preacher curl when you're out in front of you, you are still under load. Whereas on a barbell curl, when you hold that stretch position, there's really not much tension going through your arms whatsoever. Finally, to finish up with, John put us through a technique he picked up from one of his early mentors, John Perillo, which is a fascial stretch technique that I believe is referred to as fascial scraping, maybe. So while Sarah is holding a stretch here for her biceps, John is compressing down on the biceps, which creates this occlusion or choking effect to the biceps region and it accentuates the stretch further. Once you release the stretch, you feel this massive rush of blood to the area, which feels absolutely awesome. And John Perillo, I think, would say that it was helped to create more definition or separation in the muscle, maybe create more room to grow. I'm not really sure how much I believe that, and honestly, neither does John really. We just think that it created all the blood flow, and it felt really good, particularly towards the end of a workout. It's a little bit advanced, and definitely not for everybody. So what you could try doing instead as a bit more of a regression from this, is just holding a stretch position for the muscle that you're working for around 10 to 20 seconds after you've done the set, immediately after you've done the set. All right, and that's the workout. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a shot. Enjoy the pump. Don't forget to check out John's YouTube channel, and I'll see you guys next time.